Good morning and welcome. It's Chris Simmons live in Midco Studio, St. Louis, Missouri, Grand Center. Excited to be here on a Thursday. It's free comedy Thursday. Gardner's giggling. I can't stop. It's I, I gotta I gotta take note. This is gonna be good. Chris Gardner's a producer. Let's say hello to him. What's happening, Garzy? Good morning, gentlemen. And I'll say hello to a gentleman in Brooklyn in just a moment. Good morning, Walnuts. Wow. But I was uh, simply laughing because as the show opens every day, Tommy awkwardly looks at the camera as you're talking and it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. like nods in agreement with you. I know I'm you. here. Yeah. I know I'm here. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> How it be. Yeah. The, uh, the wonderful intern uh, Tommy is here to my left. He talks too much. He gets too much camera time. That is true. And that's what interns are for. Uh, we do have a gentleman in uh, New York City, Brooklyn, to be mm-hmm. exact. He's there uh, on a fellowship for Sesame Street. Well, it depends on what mood he's in at the moment or uh, what wine farts he's prepping. Uh, good morning, <laughs> Mr. Terrell. <laughs> Prophecy. Good morning, every. Good morning to everyone except Chris Dan Benman. What the hell, <laughs> pal? Thanks, and National Hockey League referees, huh? Tell you what, did you see mm. that, Trav? Mm. That make it to New York? Well, if you if the NHL hired more referees of color, that would have been a problem last there night. There it is. That's true. They would be just. <laughs> they would. <They're... laughs> I don't know what you're referencing. Uh, St. Louis, oh. uh, there, there's a lot to talk about today. We've got a melee we didn't update yesterday. We've got a great fair foul topic based on what happened in St. Louis last night. I... Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if Big City Trav cares anymore about uh, playoff hockey from St. Louis. We'll do some devil's advocate. Lots to get to. If you want to throw us some uh, comments in the comment section, we always love that. Be sure to hit share, you jerks. Uh, Travis, just we'll just lead off with this. Last night, the Blues lose in overtime to the, uh, <laughs> to the San Jose Sharks, and there was a blatant hand pass, and St. Louis is burning. It is all over. Call it off. We're uh, kicking the arch into the Mississippi River. People are pissed, it, uh, and I think justifiably so. Uh, that actually leads to our fair or foul topic today. Sports curses. People are, the sky's falling. So let's get into that. We'll tell you about uh, more of what we have on the show, but I wanted to jump right into it. Travis, this happened yesterday. You were tearing down St. Louis. You said we don't have much to do, and then this happens, and you won't hear about anything else today anywhere in St. Louis. Your thoughts, sir, on the on the event as a whole. Let's make this very quick, boys and girls, because we should spend more than five to ten minutes on freaking playoff hockey on this radio show. So first off, did the Blues have an opportunity to score in an empty net at, in the third period? I don't know. <laughs> Since Tommy lacks athletic ability and athletic knowledge on anything, yep. you other I'm gonna I'm gonna send him over to the couch. The studio, <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah. But the Blues had an opportunity in the third period to put the San Jose Sharks away on an empty netter. They could not do it. They gave up a goal with less than 90 seconds left in the third period. So they couldn't put them away when they had the opportunity to do so. Now, yes, that was, of course, a blatant hand pass. Hand job, it's being called. No, okay, well, that's cute. But what are you going to do? You move on to the next game. It happens. Now, if something happened like this to, let's say, LeBron James and the Lakers. Mm -hmm. uh, And things like that have happened in the NBA. Things like that recently uh happened in the NFL. We can go through all the sports in North America, and you will see instances of referees absolutely blowing the call. So, I again, yes, it was, of course, a blatant miss. That goes without saying. But the Blues also had an opportunity with an empty net to put the game away, and they missed. So let's talk about that as well. Let's have that same energy for the Blues missing an opportunity to put a put put a puck in an empty net. I don't they know missed. This, this is Travis. doing much. So, in layman's terms, the ref fucked up, but also... The blues is that is that what I'm getting? Yeah. All right. I yes. That for my notes. Yep. Mm. I mean, that's why I don't understand why this should be more of a conversation. The blues still had an opportunity well, to put away that team, and they did not. And right. so I get that there was a blatant hand pass, and yes, the referees missed it, but it's over with. The NHL is not going to change their reviewable rules in the playoffs. It did cost the Blues a game, but what are you going to do? It's two one San Jose. 
And St. Louis fans just have to get over it. Stop bitching and crying about it this morning. Stop spilling your coffee in the car. Worry about other important things. So the so the Blues yeah. lost the game. They played very well. They should be able to come out on Friday night and compete and hopefully win that game. But they had opportunities to put that game away last night, and they did not. And it cost them in the end. Don't ever leave a game up to the referees. Um, I want to explore something real quick. What do you mean by spilling coffee in the car? Is that like a saying? Or what is I it? think that's a, that, that's a thing here in Brooklyn. You guys wouldn't get it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Stop spilling your latte in the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, I was just I I wanted to try and follow along. I wasn't familiar with that colloquialism, it seems. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to. Have you guys know I'm right. You guys know I'm right. You know the Blues know had right. an opportunity to win that game last night. They did not, and I want the same fans that are crying about that hand pass, mm-hmm. which they are justified in crying about, to also cry about how they missed an opportunity to score on an empty net. Yeah, an empty net. You know, a, a net that's not protected. You know, a, a goal that was open for them to score that would have won in the game. An that empty net, logical. which led to the fandom of Tony, one Tony X at one point when he was like, where the fuck he going? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great <laughs> moment in St. Louis. Black. So we should love empty nets here in St. Louis is the thing. It we, leads to fandom. We absolutely should. Uh, on this show, we do a topic every day. It's uh, fair or foul. Sports curses is that topic. We're going to give away $10 to Buzz's Wine Grill. What you do is you write a sentence to a paragraph and email us, wall at weareliveradio.com. If we pick yours, you win 10 bucks. The Buzz is Hawaiian Grill. We'll read that at the end of the show. I think this is a good one because uh, we, make fun, we made fun of the Billy Goat for a long time, but uh-huh. uh, let's say the Blues lose out the rest of this. Still, there's a lot of great Blues fans here. I mean, they're approaching if they're not already there. If, it's, if you want to adopt that uh, cursed... I guess moniker. I I personally don't find it to be productive. I think a lot of people are going to start in on that a lot if of, they haven't already. A lot of blues fans do. Correct. Well, I think, yeah. and it can be a St. Louis thing at times with Dinkinger and other things like that. Oh, uh, I, go, you know. are they going to bring up the fifth down? Are they going to bring up Dinkinger? What else are they going to bring up? What else blues fans and Cardinal fans are going to cry about today? Who are they going to cry about more about the Rams? Boy, Travis. Travis is really Fox News this morning. He's, he's all accountability. and No, uh, he just hates. He, he's a bootstrap guy. He hates flyover country now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he refers to us as flyover country. Yeah. He was going off on Alabama yesterday in his home state. I was. Maybe embarrassed because, him a little this morning. Because I, I'm a little bit annoyed in the, in the fact that I, I, I understand what sports means to a region. I absolutely do. And I, I completely get why people are emotional and upset this morning. At the same time, last night, Missouri Senate passed an abortion bill to, no, to force didn't. women. Uh, uh, the Senate is pushing forth legislation about eight-week ban on abortion. Just and I get think it right. That it, I think that would warrant more anger and frustration than the Blues losing Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals. I'm just annoyed with everyone and how they expend their emotions when it comes to certain things the blues had a chance to win last night they didn't and they need to grow up okay so you lost the game get on to friday the series is not over you still have an opportunity to win this series i only uh it's not like it was a game seven yeah so i don't understand why people like again i don't know it's just very weird what we get angry and upset about and i get people being frustrated at a missed bad call but so what friday night's going to be here I would imagine the Blues are still going to come out with their hair on fire. They should be just as motivated. But you can't look back at that game and sit up here and say that they didn't have their chances of putting away the San Jose Sharks. I think that's part of the frustration, though, too. Yeah. And that's it's, fine. It's like you go into the overtime and you're like, oh, man, we had a shot there. And then on top of that, it's not that they just scored. It's just that they scored in an illegal way. And then that leads to another discussion of why is a play not reviewable to begin with. And then it leads to their, you know, NHL executives overseeing the rules and stuff for this, for this uh, Western Conference final, giving, you know, a shit explanation and dodging everything. That's and pretty rough. So it was like one thing. On, I think it's a one thing on top of the other. It's not just... Sure. The call, it's what the call leads to discussion-wise as well, Travis. I think that's because it, 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 it just builds and builds and builds. And For anyone builds that's builds. not. So it's hard. I think you understand this. It's hard once it just keeps piling up to not get angry about it. And I 
And so I can, I'm going to, what I do is uh, you, you get, you get a day, you get a day to be pissed. And I then, think you get, a, yeah, I think you, I think you get half the night. Look, we all okay. saw it in real time. And I think we heard the explanation. We knew the explanation was going to be BS. Did you honestly think that they were going to send out a representative that was going to acknowledge their mistake? And have you not been paying attention to this country in the last three and a half years? What made you think that an authority figure was going to come out and admit to a mistake? I'm trying to figure out why people had it in their head that, that say we're going to send someone in front of the media to say, guys, we screwed up. We screwed over the St. Louis Blues. You knew that wasn't going to happen. So I think we keep giving ourselves these false projections as to how things should be. And they're just not that. And we well, have to learn to get over it. I think other sports acknowledge when they've made mistakes, though. And I think that's why people. The NBA do. does, certainly. Absolutely. The NBA, the NFL has. Um as bad as of a league they are, they acknowledge certain mistakes that they've made in officiating. Uh, MLB has had to do the same. And so I think that's, I think when the response is, you know, in a way a little adversarial too, it's like, you know, that's unnecessary. The tone doesn't have to be that way. You can answer the questions and, and just be short and not give much and vague. You're, you're going to get, you're going to get knocked no matter what, right? I mean, right. in that situation. So to become adversarial with it, too, if people haven't read the comments, they're basically, yeah, it's not reviewable. That's not reviewable. any question they were asked post game. Um, and then they took like almost an hour to even answer questions about it when the video evidence True. is right there in front of you. So playing the, uh, you know, slow playing at some, that's frustrating as well. And so, like I said, it just all, all builds out. I'm upset. And I noted on Twitter last night. That, hey, wait, you're going to show me this hand job video over and over, but mm. I don't get to see the mm -hmm. Robert Kraft one? That's some bullshit that's, right that's there. That's the most important topic at hand right yeah, there. Exactly. That's, I think that, hey, if you're going to do that to me, I get to see the other. And I think an attorney should Wrong make that argument you. in Florida. <laughs> but I, I think Craig, well, Bar Craig Berube said it, though, in the press conference last mm -hmm. night, and he said the Blues should have finished off the Sharks in the third period. So I think the Blues realize they missed the opportunity. Absolutely, the refs missed it. But the Blues are just as frustrated because they also missed an opportunity to yeah, put away the I Sharks. Agree. So yeah. they should, again, use that as motivation to put them away on Friday night. And Ooh. you knew you were going to have to win three games anyway. So Let's you make, still have to win three games. Go out and do it. Let's make ourselves feel better. Let's spin it positively like you almost did there. <laughs> Let's just say, hey, this this is now added motivation. Let's just use it that way, right? Now, the Blues won't win this series. <laughs> but they should use it as motivation. <laughs> I just said now, spin it in a positive said. way, and I gave you the <laughs> on, opening right, right put there. It, put it in terms. <laughs> and no, I ain't shit. <laughs> put it in terms. They, they will not win the series. Make it positive. Okay. Ready? Oh. Oh, well, we got the newest okay. game sweeping the nation. All right, make it positive. <laughs> We're going to make Travis make it positive. Gardner, give him a topic. Make it positive, Travis. Oh. Use, that, use that jazz ability. Here we go. Go ahead, Gardner. Make it positive. What do uh, you got for Travis? St. Louis City. Well, it is near a river. The river floods a lot, and that means it could eventually wash away all the way crime and corruption. Oh, mm, yeah. The, the uh, blood stain. That's positive as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I, I do have the, uh, the video of the goal, and uh, we could, you know, relive our agony. Okay. And... Uh, Kind of see what everyone's talking about since we do have that ability Aww. to do so. We should. Aww. Here you go. Here is shot clock. Goes after the loose puck. Pass it in front. Here's Douglas. This is up. They score. Alan Carlson has won the game for San Jose. They are talking to the referees about a potential hand pass here. That's what Bennington's talking about. He's wondering if there was a hand pass here. I don't think this is reviewable. This will be the referee, oh. similar to the puck over the glass. The rush, Meyer fires it. As he hits the puck there, the glove pass from Meyer to he Nyquist it over with is hand. where the play should have been blown down. And then it went over to Carlson. There's your glove. 
like and touching the ball in the soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, yeah. to be dead, totally on. dead on the ball. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I don't even watch hockey in that. He touched that ball. The two referees, Johnny Murray and Matt McPherson, are the linesmen on a controversial finish to this game three. Apparently, um, a water bottle at that guy. Oh, they threw beer and yeah, they it, were it got bad. Throwing stuff on the ice. Apparently, Doug oh, Armstrong, Doug's GM, uh, quiet, Travis. was banging Nothing on the thugs. Uh, was banging on the uh, the officials' door and yelling, "Effing garbage! Effing garbage!" I uh, <laughs> it's, amazing, gotta... it's amazing what people get angry about, man. It's very, very fascinating. What a it was yeah. a good inside look at the psyche of people last night but good for them I, i'm i'm glad oh, that they showed their emotions yeah no i'm glad they showed their emotions i'm glad people okay. were i'm glad look i'm happy for doug armstrong the general manager going berserk um trying to physically get inside the room to go after the referees he wasn't trying to get inside the doors. room you're lying right now you're straight yeah, up um, lying i was gonna say mm -hmm. you act like you're not living off a belly like belly full of gasoline anymore <laughs> but then you show yourself with you your have, lies you have, you're not a you're not a reasonable measured you, person no, so stop you, it you have no facts at all do you think number one you you were Doug trying Armstrong, to make a point, he, a point earlier about the crackles. senate missouri senate you know, hey, hey, about this abortion bill, they passed last night. They didn't even pass it last night. They passed it this morning. So if you're going to come, come armed with facts. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. They passed it six hours later. My apologies. Yes. They passed yes. the bill that was going to be restricted to women's reproduction rights. Yes. My apologies for getting the time incorrect. Your credibility incorrect. is shot. Well, I apologize. I will, I will make sure I will get a better time stamp next time when reproductive okay. rights of yeah. women are being taken away. Thank you. Yeah, That's I all we ask. I appreciate so. that. That's all we ask yeah. for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I look again at the end of the day, the Blues had an opportunity to win that game. They missed that opportunity. Look in the mirror this morning, boys, and realize it was you, not just the guys in the stripes, but you also were the ones who are responsible for coming up short today. Wow, Mr. Accountability, Marvis Morell, everybody. And I think we've spent more than enough on hockey today. Thank you, guys. What would you yeah, like to you're go not to? really producing today, what so would, I don't think you, so, Travis. What would you like to go to next, Travis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Chris you, had, Chris, you had so much to say about the game last night because you've been following this team, you know, all 82 games. I'm a puckhead. You tell me what you saw last night. Hey, I'm a puckhead through and through. I sharpen my skates just like the rest of us. I like talking biscuits. Where did you watch the game last night? I like night? talking biscuits and baskets. You know what? You want to get a mullet? Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. It makes you more athletic, gives you a little bit more of a flow when you're going down the ice. And you know what? If there's a set of boobs behind the coach in the hockey area where coaches sit, that happens too. It's a big part of the playoffs. When did you go to bed, Chris? When did you go to bed? <laughs> That's, who, who are we kidding? When did you go to bed last night? It's a good question, Travis. Around 10 15. Yeah. Uh, what do you sharpen your skates with? Sharpeners. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Where, where do you get those sharpeners? <laughs> the hockey sharpener store. Which? Next to Sharper Image in the St. Peter's Mall. Have you ever been? Mm. I have. Okay. What? Mm. Don't give me that look. I said I said St. Think... Peter's Mall because it's like probably an hour and a half from where you live, hoping you'd never been. Well, and it's Mid Rivers Mall. Let's get it. Yeah. 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 That so, was my so mall neither, growing up. Neither, so, yeah. None of us have been there. So, so there we go. Except, yeah. Um, He's right. Chris, how will this affect local bars and restaurants surrounding the enterprise now that the hand job that Chris Gardner has affectionately called it uh, may have ruined the rest of the postseason for the St. Louis Blues? Oh, that's a great question, Travis, and I'll tell you more about it. But uh, the reason <laughs> the, uh, mm. the playoffs mm. have meant so ball. much, have meant so much to local bars and restaurant is be restaurants is because on Thursdays, we do free comedy Thursday at hockey bars like Southtown <laughs> Pub. We bring in comics from all over the country. Like Matt Wayman. He's from here oh, in St. Louis, but he performs very everywhere. Funny. Gardner will not be performing mm. tonight. Matt Wayman, you know how strong a comic he is? He goes, give me that opening spot. Let me, let me wrangle this little bar crowd into something. Matt Wayman, Erickson, and Rick Wood. Rick Wood and Erickson are coming from Los Angeles, the real entertainment capital of the world. Travis, any thoughts on you that? Watch them out. You Erickson watch them out. and Rick Wood coming in from Los Angeles. Check them out. And then your headliner. Mm. Travis wouldn't book him. He doesn't deal with black comics. I do. I deal with black headliners. <laughs> Joe Von Bibbs, one of the funniest people, not just in St. Louis. He's spent five years succeeding in New York. He set a path for people like Travis. 
He's here, he's in St. Louis, he's headlining. The guy can do an hour with his eyes closed, and he's going to give you a blistering 20 minutes of comedy tonight. So free comedy Thursday, made possible because there is hockey in the air More in here, St. Louis. Here's, a, here's another optimistic look, and this ties into a couple things we talked about. Um, this just maybe extends the series. We go seven games, and that means more opportunities for bars. More economic opportunities. That's right. There and you're you all go, about Travis. that. Yeah. There's some positive spin. Mm -hmm. I was curious to know how hand drops affected the bars. Well, thank you, Tommy. Thank, that's good. Thank He's you. He's showing Tommy. me his notes if you're just listening at home. Uh, Why are you smiling like a jackass? <laughs> so please go to is that a Hollister shirt? What the hell are you yeah, wearing? Yeah, it is. Oh. I've been wearing brands. <laughs> Travis, what were... <laughs> if, if, uh, if Hollister and Abercrombie were to us whites, uh, what was your, uh, what's your embarrassing thing that you're probably in a photo of from Wait, like 2003 or four? Quiet. <laughs> you're embarrassing. Just, just, just know it. That H, you're proud of that H? It's got an H on it. It's not Tommy it, Hosslander. Come on, it man. It could stand for like, ha. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> Travis, what was, what's an embarrassing brand that I could unearth a photo from 2002 with you in it? I don't think, th I don't th I don't, I don't think there's an embarrassing brand for, oh, for my God. community. I okay. think, here, because what, what everything we wear comes back as cool again. So mm. for example, you, I was thinking FUBU, but one, FUBU was an incredibly popular brand. Mm -hmm. during that time so there was no reason to be ashamed of wearing it and also fubu is coming back so it's i don't think i would i mean i would look to my hair when i had it i had embarrassing moments with that but did you uh, ever when it comes to brands and clothes i didn't know i was never embarrassed by what i wore i would... wore them for a reason and i wore them at the time and i looked pretty damn good wearing it damn he's so confident Where i'm does trying that come to from? i'm trying to remember exactly what my iou sweatshirts and z cavaricis look like back in the day for me because mm. those were a couple of brands that i'm particularly embarrassed if there's a photo out there of me in this uh what i thought was a super cool tommy hilfiger bright yellow yeah. fleece that i pulled over and mm -hmm. i'm thinking it was probably pretty fuzzy and i probably resembled a, a middle school big bird travis i brought shame to the sesame street name this is the least I mean, man what we say about that man what we say about bringing a name up without you paying a fee Oh, my mistake, sir. Well, I, Travis, I don't just, let me yell Hollander, you. Okay. Buck board. My dad was not pleased at all when I started tight rolling my jeans. Hmm. So he was not pleased at all with that look. And, Why did uh, you do that? Uh, kids were doing it. There were, kids were doing it. And I wasn't up. Was I this was your upset. time when you were going to Fort Zumwalt? Uh, this would have been in elementary school. It was in the Zumwalt school district. It would have been like fourth oh, okay. or fifth grade, something along those lines, I think. Uh, oh, you're a hillbilly anyway, so it really didn't matter. He was I got hillbilly upset blood. that you were embarrassing him. I got some Paducah in me. Ew. <laughs> I, I, de yeah. I definitely wore uh, the. I can't remember if I've said this or not. I wore the wrong pair of jeans. They were probably my younger brothers. They were a little big on me uh, one morning, but then I tried to play it off like I was sagging one day, and boy, was that a rough morning at middle school. That was, I could not pull off the sag, Travis. I know you're disappointed to hear that, and it was not. Uh, not something that I ever need to revisit. I wanted to not kind of embarrass you, Travis, but I wanted to let you know that I contacted the folks at Sesame Street and oh asked about the other fellows in the program. Oh, and dear. They uh -huh. were able to forward a link to our show to all of, the, all of your other fellow writers so they can watch oh and look back on other clips that you've done. And I told them that if they need anything from me, I can provide it. Just so you know, watch mm. yourself. You're okay. in the mud oh, now. Boy. Question from uh, the comment section. Black Sheep wants to know, why is Travis broadcasting from a P.F. Chang's this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Crab Rangoon for breakfast. What's wrong? <laughs> you Midwesterners wouldn't get it. <laughs> I mean, we know he went east, but that's... <laughs> geez. Not far east. <laughs> Thanks for thank you. <laughs> answer the answer the question, please, Travis. <laughs> it's, 
surprisingly, it's a 24-hour PF Chang's in Brooklyn, so I figured I'd pop in here because they had solid Wi-Fi. Service. They gave me free Wi-Fi. Yeah, they're like, they don't really say much, and they just kind of leave me alone. Is that by the yoga studio? Uh-huh. It's, it's inside the yoga studio. <laughs> That's perfect. They have, they're have they literally holding class right now in the smoking section. <laughs> uh, Travis, we've got a habit on this show of um, pushing. Uh, we had a another poll yesterday, I believe, that we didn't yeah. get to. Uh, let's go check the results on that on Twitter. We're at We Are Live Radio. Gardner, do you have the results from yesterday's mail? Yeah, and we put this out. To be fair to us, we put it out after the show, slightly after the show. Um, we asked, I asked a question to Travis that I wanted him to think about some because he didn't have an answer right away, which is surprising when that happens. So the question is, would you rather watch the movie Loquisha or the Robert Kraft handjob video? That's the question. 18. I think I concluded, I personally conclude that I would probably watch Loquisha. It, so the hands... Okay. I don't really like talking about this. It's so uncomfortable. So it's basically, will you sit through 90 minutes of coming up with jokes about this garbage movie, or do you want to see an old man get wanked for a minute and a half? Like, that's, that's, that's harrowing. Travis, you're with 18% of the people who voted for Loquisha, 82% for the Robert Kraft handjob video. Maybe today's... Today's question could be something like, would you rather watch the Robert Kraft handjob video or the shark's hand job goal on loop for like you know wow. two hours mm -hmm. probably the goal oh. <laughs> well now we know tommy's vote <laughs> good answer tommy <laughs> being honest you taught him well travis <laughs> yeah and then also you have to remember what I think some of the reports that are coming out of florida in regards to the robert Kraft video are yeah. also suggesting it wasn't just a hand job uh, it, they say the lady decided to turn Robert Kraft into her personal puppet. You so, know about puppets? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault, Travis. You're gonna come for me, pal. Yeah, you, you should. You, I don't reason, really care. I don't really care for your reaction about the Jack Daniel statue uh, getting stolen. I'm coming for you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Tra Travis knows that part of that is what? his fault for saying that. You know that, don't you? That is Travis missing the empty net. <laughs> that is, that's true. All right. I, that's I true. take partial responsibility for that one. Uh, yeah. What was that, Damn Tommy? It. Uh, you, you, never mind. Did we miss the moment? You, yeah. You said I'm c coming for you, and I said what context? It's fair. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was it good was good on. in the moment. You can get you can get bonus point. We can we our review system works here. Unlike yeah. the national. Hockey it would have worked. I, I can't believe Gail moment. Hollander invites you on his comedy shows. <laughs> I don't think he does. Does he? Yes. Oh, at the same. Okay, good. Uh, so, what's our? What are our results completely? Did we get those? Eighty-two percent craft handy video. Eighteen percent loquisha. Now we're gonna get censored by Facebook. Yep, that's how it goes. Uh, any uh, any awards uh, updates on Laquisha that anybody needs to share? Gardner, are you doing the uh, festival watch? Is it getting picked up by several? I have not seen it get picked up by a festival and considering it claimed to be a part of a festival the festival says it wasn't a part of i doubt in the future we'll see that mm. i don't know how the industry works i'm not an insider travis, travis but i i'm surprised i give uh jeremy seville credit i don't think he's tweeted or i haven't seen him say any public comments since the huge uproar about the movie so I'm a little bit surprised that he's been able to basically stay low while basically half the country's enraged at a film that he's a part of and that he uh, helped create. So I don't know. I'm, I I don't think we'll be seeing this movie anytime soon, but at the same time, I think it's going to build up that um, underground hype Yeah. and someone's going to come across the film and it's going to be one of those odd cult classics that people watch in Hollywood at 12 o'clock showings and it's still going to find a way to, I don't know, make this guy, Jeremy Seville, a decent amount of money. You think, you think it's going to turn into one of those for no reason you've decided you're going to, you're going to, it's, it's like whenever a dog keeps biting on the rope, it's like if you, if you pull, they're just going to bite more and people are just going to hang on to it for, for What's the, the movie that James it? Franco and Seth Rogen uh, remade, The Room? Is oh, that what? Yeah. So I good. think it's going to be maybe our generation's version of that where 
<laughs> it's so incredibly bad and offensive that in a few years someone's going to do basically a remake of the movie and it's going to basically get nominated for Oscars. I'm It's going to be it's going to be one of those weird cult classics. I'm waiting for a picture of like uh, Kanye in his own personal uh, you know viewing room watching it with the family or something. Like something out like that mm-hmm. coming up. I think that would be kind of perfect for everything that's going on. Nice, nice way to wrap things up, yeah. wouldn't you say? Puts a bow on it. Travis can finally use that uh, college dropout as uh, kindling. If, if I'm <laughs> Trump, if I'm Trump, how are you not having a screening of this in the White House? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. You should be an advisor. You should get a consulting fee because that would be a big hit, and it would be. <laughs> it think, would think it would. about it because he could spin it and be like. Look at me! I'm supporting black actors. I'm, I'm making sure they get the proper exposure. Oh, he, he's he'll... he's been in New York. He's got a good Trump now. <laughs> oh man! He should just get the. Yes, I've paid for 27 abortions, but I don't think the rest of you can. Sorry, go ahead. He should just give Seville the uh, Presidential oh. Medal of Freedom. Just bring him to the White House. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so, what better way to get you roll out diamond and silk? They can come to the red carpet. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. Ben run. Carson can introduce the cast. No, no, no. Absolutely. I think Tiger Woods walks out. You, so you have the crowd. You have the theater. The curtain's still down, but it parts. Mm. Tiger Woods comes out with a, a pitching wedge and hits like a uh, one of those exploding golf balls, and whenever the smoke clears, then Mr. Seville walks out, and you have that happen. I think that's the only way. And again, too. You're bringing more people of color into the situation, and Travis. I think we all understand what that's uh, what that's for in the end. Damn it! Yeah, Trump has a. I, I would not be surprised if we if he even cre- he creates a film award just for this movie alone. <laughs> the White House <laughs> Film Festival. The White House. House film Festival. White. White yeah. capitalized. Yes, all the letters. <laughs> Oh. Trump could use tax dollars to make the projector come out of the mouth of a Jordan Peele statue for the screening. <laughs> oh, God. Says the black sheep. Yeah, if he, if he, gosh, I hate it. I'm putting these great ideas into the universe. If someone's on <laughs> Infowars that Chris Gardner has attracted to our show is going to pick up on it and pass it on to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm. God. <sighs> Sorry. Man, it's amazing. That's pretty sad. But what yeah, happens? I feel like that. Maybe we should see if we can get Beebs to make a LaQuisha shirt and see how people respond. You want me to wear it? Do you, or no, Tommy. <laughs> we'll have uh, the 100 pound intern walk through. Tommy, what neighborhood would you like him should, to walk through with the LaQuisha shirt on? He should actually try it open for uh, Javon. Have him oh. open tonight for Javon no. and, uh, and have that shirt on. No, uh, I will get not. Get the crowd on its feet. No. Mm-hmm. Can't we so just. So much for being a risk taker, Tommy. I'm a risk taker until like. I don't want to like die. Until that's not how risk work, pal. Can't that is out. how that works. I'll yeah. get punched for you guys. I won't get shot for you. You guys. won't be doing oh, anything yeah. for us. It involves getting punched. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make that clear on the record for legal for <laughs> anything that comes back. Except selling your grandmother's china. That's all. The only mm. thing. All right. Um, all right. We still haven't just... told her, have you, Tommy? <laughs> no. It's been twenty hours, maybe. No, actually, it's been multiple years. You've been doing this behind her back for years. That's what you've been doing. Yeah. It's been like a day since I was guilted about it, Travis. Yeah, okay. Well, here's the thing. I think women are seeing how you treat your grandmother, so that's why you may be having difficulty dating. Don't if you can it. treat your grandmother that way, yeah. imagine what you can treat, how you would treat oh, your girlfriend. Should I take the bait? No, I mean, just don't you get take, one, yeah. one oh, sentence yeah. response. Don't take dating advice from Travis. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, why would Tra- you take dating Tra- advice Travis, from me? I'm Travis, happy. Travis went on that Alyssa Milano sex strike two years ahead of time. So I'm almost that's how, that's how woke he is. <laughs> I'm, Travis, I'm almost a hundred percent sure I'm doing better than you are. Oh wow! So, <laughs> well, boy, if that wasn't the response of a smartass twenty-one-year-old comedian from St. Louis. I'm pretty sure I'm uh, pretty much out of the game hey, for you. I don't sound like that. Thank I sound you. like this. <laughs> wow. And I, that was great. And I definitely do better than you, Travis. Wow. Oh, damn. All right. Then show me her underwear. <laughs> this is going to be. I'm not going to uh, do that. That's weird. Yeah, this yeah, is where, this is gonna, um, why don't, this is where we, this is where I walk off. Respect her privacy, Travis. Oh, wow. He, he, respect respect women. Privacy. he respects women. But yeah. did you respect? 
But did you respect that ass? <laughs> oh, yeah. Ball game. Oh, Ball yeah. game. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Real quick. Uh, if you've slept with Tommy in the past week, be sure to hit share to help organic growth. Thank you. Know you. What I mean. Thank uh-huh. you. Please. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> we, send, we send young Tommy out to bed, ladies, to up our download stats. Yes. Um, That's how it goes. On the LaQuisha thing, why don't we just reverse it and, like, have a, a black woman play a white man on the radio? But she, but she goes, she has to be like MAGA or something like that. I don't know. But we could just reverse. Do we want to pitch this to Stacey Static? We could just reverse the whole thing. Why no, we that do that? could work. What would we call it? Travis, how much? Tra- tell me this, Travis. If, black, if the black name Laquisha is the strong black name, what is the ultimate white name? Chess. Chris. What's Chess. the ultimate white man name? No, Chris is common and there's, black, there's black dudes mixed in. Keith. Keith? No, you think Keith Sweat. Chad? Chester. Kyle? Kyle's good. Ooh, Kyle may be it. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle coming enough. this fall. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think what Jared happens when a black a woman is tired of not being listened to? She becomes an angry white man. <laughs> Kyle, this fall. Oh, wait. Hang on. We've got the best submission I've seen yet. Uh, her radio name could be Travis. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the black sheep. <laughs> It would work. It would work. Uh, we have uh, a listener that Uh-oh. thought uh, Bryce is a good name. I agree with that. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> Triangle Assassin also thinks uh, Tommy should have whipped out a giant pair of leopard print underwear <laughs> like the movie Road Trip because he feels I as though you her. look like that actor. What's that? <laughs> I boinked her. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. i got to look up who this actor is. Uh, oh. I'm told that uh, Mindy's show already had an episode like this. Is that true? Mm-hmm. I think the worst part is that Jeremy Seville has never heard of a podcast. Like, if you want to have your voice out there to the world, why do you have to pretend to be a black woman to go on a radio show in order to do it? He's got private school bills to pay, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Everybody knows. You hey, know, I pay my Los kids Angeles private school bills. I pay my kids private school bills with this show. Mm-hmm. So That's it's possible. True. That's true. Yeah, that kid's got to go to Chaminade, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Look at Tommy. Let's movie. look at him. What? Look at him. Man, eat a damn sandwich. <laughs> I wanted to eat a bagel this morning, but I was late. <laughs> I love his stories. They're the best, aren't they? Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, Gardner. Uh... Who, whoever we bring into the company, can you please vet them too? I don't know what. You don't he, have, you, have you noticed Drug I'm Christmas. too busy to truly vet people? Have you Each. noticed? Do you oh, see who just gets oh, 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 three oh, yeah. fourths of airtime? <laughs> to you, be fair, Gardner did vet me, and he was like, "Yeah, sure," because we talked about ghosts for a half hour. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Gardner, yeah, he's been vet. I'm, I'm on board with this, yeah. Yeah, Travis. I'm, I'm a, I'm a because it's chaos. That's why. I took I took him to a pizza buffet and bought his lunch the other day. Oh I my. ate two whole pizzas. <laughs> he tried for three. He tried for three. I'll uh, I'll tell you this. Guys. A little, quarter of a pizza. His little torso just wouldn't allow it. <laughs> while uh, while this is riveting content, I do need to pay some bills. Tell you about St. Louis Counseling Services. StLouisCounseling.org is the website. St. Louis Counseling provides professional counseling services to children, adolescents, adults, and the elderly in various settings, including offices throughout the St. Louis area, schools, and places of employment. Tune in to their weekly podcast, Mental Health Matters. Travis, their recent guest, Kendra Jones. She lit it up. She came in. She's a comic from here in St. Louis, also an engineer. We're big friends uh, and fans of uh, Kendra's, and she was on Mental Health Matters. St. Louis Counseling Services, providing counseling, school partnership programs, employee assistant programs to individuals and businesses throughout the St. Louis area since 1955. Again, check out stlouiscounseling.org for more information. We uh, cannot thank them enough for being a part of the program and sponsoring us here on We Are Live. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. <sighs> Trav, he's flexing on hey, you, Chris. Look what you've done. He's flexing on you. Oh, I see you, Tommy. I see you've been working out, player. Okay. How many push-ups have you done this week? Six? I can't do push-ups, but I can lift a weight. <laughs> how much? Like, is, that a, is, that, is there a medical reason why you can't do push-ups? No, I just don't know how. <laughs> Maybe Sean can teach it. I can lift 12 pounds. I am curious, though. I, this is interesting. 
who do you think is more likely to be able to do a push-up right now, Chris or Tommy? Oh, me. Mm. For sure, me. Is that a, Can we make that the melee, Gardner? Um, we can. I'll do one after the show again. That gives us okay. some time to get results. Who right game. now could do a push-up, Chris or Tommy? I'm going to go Chris. I can do a pull-up. I, I'm going Tommy on this. I don't know if Chris is getting if back a, up. If a light gust of wind <laughs> makes you do a proper pull-up, that doesn't count. That's not okay. <laughs> I did you, Chris, it. when was the last time you did a push-up? I think your it was either your aunt or one of your cousins oh. was over like a week and a half ago, and I think it was uh, several of those. I mean, I don't know if don't it was me pushing joke. up or if it was her, but it was uh, it was aggressive. Whatever was happening. I don't get so. the joke. Can somebody please explain? Chris it? hates women, so he has to go to a sexual joke in order for himself to feel comfortable. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> is that what that was? <laughs> That is uh, St. Louis counseling level uh, analysis there. That was good. That was really good. Should I just see if I can do a push-up now? No. Yeah, try it on the table. I'm not going to have him try die the on the, on the broadcast. On the I mean, it'd be great for views, oh, but no, it's not going to happen. Go, Tommy. Well, are you Tommy, medically out, cleared yeah. to do this? Yeah, I'm fine. You, okay. That's you guys, here we go. I mean, okay. have we, have, we have a... Let me see. Let me all right, so I'll, I'll call How's it play-by-play. Play. We've got very poor form. He went down uh, kind of... Caterpillar style. He's not getting up. He's not getting up. Travis, oh, he's this not is, getting up. There's a lot of shaking. Oh, no, no. All right, call it, call it off. Call it off. No, there was no. not a. That did not happen. He did not oh, succeed. No. Look how ready he is, guys. Oh, Maybe what have we done? Try, That's not gonna happen. Try again. later after that the That floor show. was cold. Oh my gosh. It's because you were just laying on it because you couldn't get yourself off it, Tommy. <laughs> Jesus exactly. Christ. Uh, last time Travis did a push-up, it was uh, orange sherbet, and it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from the black sheep it's a push pop yeah it's definitely a push pop <laughs> you know we were just he's laughing because he's like bro I, I ate a push pop last night I'm about I'm to say they still gonna... have those here Black Sheep is killing it today. He is. I wish he would he host is. the show. So he's killing me, actually. That's what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> on Tuesday, Travis I'm driving through Forest Park and there's some traffic and I realize Oh, it's Tuesday. And I'll tell you what. I Find me something black people in St. Louis love more than Twilight Tuesdays at the History Museum. Ooh, they and love all that. it, boy. Yeah, I mean, there were cars everywhere. So I was a little frustrated with the traffic. They showed the movie Twilight every single Tuesday in the summer, <laughs> and black people love it. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. I don't know about that. But, okay. uh, but I noticed, and they probably did this strategically, there's an ice cream man van in front of me. Like, duh, ice cream man? And I'm like, like, painted on the side? I just start following it through the park, and Jess notices, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I was just seeing if he was going to stop anytime soon. And if he had stopped, I was going to get out of the car and go get, like, a bomb pop or something like that. So I was basically stalking the ice cream man through Forest Park the other day. You proud about that? Why didn't you and the lady stop and enjoy Twilight Tuesday? Uh, I think that's cultural appropriation. Or just Twilight Tuesday. Well, that's... Gardner, will you break that down for Tommy? Basically, they put on like a, a concert near the History Museum in Forest Park on Tuesday nights. Oh, Families okay. get together. You bring your cooler, blanket, chairs, and just kind of chill in the park. Oh, That's maybe all I'll bring Tom. a date to that. You should. Wow. I think you should do the movie series. Okay. They got the movie series on Art Hill coming up in July. It's going to be a little hot, but... Yep. Black Panther being shown. Black Panther, Anchorman, Goonies... And That's Ocean's 8, I believe. I am curious to see nice. how much impact this has on the area, but uh, if Anchorman gets shown on that, does that mean for the next 10 years we're going to have a bunch of uh, me's walking around quoting Anchorman? Yes. Is that the effect that we're going to have again? Ooh. Do you remember that? 2004? Yeah. To, uh, I mean, the phrase leather-bound books has never been used so many times mm -hmm. ever in the history of spoken word. Right? Office smells of, was it rich mahogany? Yeah. You're Are we just going to skip over the fact that Tommy tried to pretend that he's going to take a real person on a date to one of these events? Uh, I've taken dates to Art Hill. Oh, stop look lying. at this kid. Things aren't going stop so hot lying. in Brooklyn, huh, Travis? <laughs> 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 My seems, Tinder's broke. <laughs> seems like you're projecting here a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. actually not. I do better than you do. Date this I have, an, I have a date this afternoon. In okay, fact. hold so the damn just then, fine. Stop it. Stop, I have a date stop, stop, with, stop, a, stop, with stop. a mistress <laughs> I call Sesame Street. 
an afternoon date. Uh, what uh, what does oh, this yeah. entail? It's Break what they do here on the East Coast because no, we're so not. busy. We have it to do not. dates during lunch. So oh, that you no, can be so, jelly. No, it's so that they avoid dinner with you. The lunch is an easier out. Yeah, it is. They can be like, Oop, New <laughs> oh, York, gotta go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta go to my job. It's uh -huh. like no one's gonna say, oh, you want to go back to my place after lunch date. So they can Tommy says it. he's doing better than me, but he can't even do a push-up. So I already know he's not having any sexual activities. Look, people really enjoy lanky dudes. You seen Pete Davidson? He he's he, like he does he's right. a foot taller than you. He is not. He's a and he's what the kids would call me. talented. Hey, I'm also pretty talented. I don't know if you noticed. If Tommy, <laughs> I will say this: you're the funniest that, person on this show, Tommy. Are you sure about that? Uh, if I'm the funniest person in this room, I can be the funniest person in other rooms. The, literally, mm. we've interviewed legends, stars everywhere, and I'm just so proud that we finally found the funniest person on the show that's ever been here. Thank you, Tommy. No, I'm not the. Fu I'm just the funniest reoccurring. Oh, <laughs> even better. Hey, uh, Travis. Against all of our wishes, uh, Meredith in the comments says, "Tommy, sup? Got my kids next Tuesday. Dot dot dot. Do you have room for kids uh, I'm a on your Art Hill date?" I'm a great babysitter. Yeah, I can. Let's let's go to Art Hill. Oh wow! And then Tommy, you segue and go. And when I'm done, I babysit that ass. Oh. <laughs> and then when I'm done, I will babysit that ass. There it is. There you go. Oh. There you go. Good job, Tommy. I, honestly, I don't know why I come in anymore because you two should just sit here and discuss things. This is the Tommy and Travis show. I honestly think this is one of those things that you need to uh, participate in a little more, Travis. Expound on your dating advice for Tommy. That's that's yeah. Let's do this. Let's, what's the new direction? Let's do this. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you first pick up a woman, um, are you driving your mom's car or are you going to go on the metro lane? How do you uh, I bought my. I, I own my own car. First of okay. all, mm. it's I'm a great driver. Mm -hmm. uh, Ask Gardner. Mm -hmm. um, he rolled his eyes at me. It's kind of a weird thing to bring up for a date. Yeah. I'm are a you great in fact driver. a great driver? Gardner, what was the very first thing I ever did when you get got into my car? Cleaned it out, number one. Nice. Um, and then... Uh, almost ran into a wall. Oh, yeah, almost ran into a wall. And then going to the pizza buffet, <laughs> you were not in the parking spot that you tried to park in. See, I'm a great driver. Uh, I can okay. pick them up at well, the... Well, sounds like you drive like a woman. <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> So now we see why things aren't going so well in Brooklyn, Travis. <laughs> I no, respect that, women. Who's after so most, most of the time. Uh -huh. So I can pick. I, here's what I do. Here's my, my dating thing. Pick them up at their house. I bring them to dinner. I act super awkward until they bring it up. All right. And then they're like, oh, this probably isn't going to work. And then I wait five to six months. And then eventually it works out. <laughs> it's what you call the long game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you, have you done that before, Travis? Have you tried that formula? That's an interesting strategy because I don't even know if Tommy knows he's going to live that long. Oh, oh mm. I don't, but mm. it's worth a shot. <laughs> <laughs> mm. well, I good. consistently escape the friend zones. Mm. You're being locked in the friend zone okay. a lot? Oh, yeah. I don't think you're that friendly, though. I'm pretty friendly. <laughs> Just, okay, so... Good luck with all that. I think you've got it figured out. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can set we something are up. We're all morons. Yeah, we I agree. And, so uh, Meredith, in in uh, conclusion, in conclusion. <laughs> yeah, in Mer conclusion. Meredith, <laughs> yes, get me up. Meredith, the six foot tall comedian from here in St. Louis with three children. <laughs> That Tommy, me up. Tommy is now courting. So let's make it happen. Mm. I like this. This will be Tommy, uh, what you should do though, if you really are trying to finalize a date with Meredith, I suggest you send her a floor plan of your grandparents' house. There it is. All right. There it is. That's all you have to yeah. do. I'm gonna ask That's all you, gotta yeah. do. you can uh, maybe rig the next contest where we give away a hundred dollars to Gateway Powder Coating. Ooh. That's right. You could brag to your dates. You know people like Mark from Gateway Powder Coating. Fast, durable, affordable. Check out gatewaypowdercoat.com, number one resource for powder coating in the Midwest. If Tommy's wheels get chipped and they need to be uh, like a fly color, like a neon green, purple, maybe he just wants a classic white, Gateway Powder Coating can help that. If you guys have smokers, maybe you want to have people over, you want to smoke some meat, you want to grill, you want that 
grill, smoker, whatever to look great in the backyard, make sure you go to Gateway Powder Coat and gatewaypowdercoat.com is the website. Jamie Croc in the comments. Tommy doesn't have stepdaddy money is, uh, <laughs> is Jamie Croc's <laughs> issue. All right, Jamie. <laughs> cool it. That's good. Um, can I show you guys a couple of pictures? Oh, that usually yeah. Fire out. away! Uh, what? No. Oh, how's there that much old chewed up gum in your jeans? Weird. Sorry. Go ahead. Now, Travis, we were discussing. I think believe it was earlier this week about that new Snapchat filter. Um, yes. That can like you can make a guy look like a girl or see what a the guy looks like as a girl. Um, I just I downloaded the app last night. I'll oh, be sending mine in uh, later today. I'm gonna send mine in tomorrow to you. Guys. Okay, please do. Um, I don't have the app. But our friend Brendan Schaefer has it, and I saw him oh, tweeting boy. about it yesterday. So I he's a I, bit andro- androgynous already. Uh, I, yeah, I saw his picture, so uh, he wasn't pleased. Um, I asked him, I'm like, how does this work? Can I just send you some photos and you see what happens? And he's like, yeah, sure. So it's not the best quality, but um, all right, what do we got? He was able to try and get uh, me. On that filter. Oh, so there's one. <laughs> that is. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I look like a like a larger Pam from the office. I think. Yeah, you do. You do. She's. She, you are the woman who's like. I'm, everybody always gets me mixed up with Jenna Fisher, and I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you look like Pam if she went through with her marriage with Roy. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Pam, if she went ahead and got that hosting gig at Applebee's instead of doing the paper yeah. company. Yeah. That so uh, there's one of them, and then uh, the other one. I guess my facial hair kind of struggled with the filter. Uh, of course. So. We got this one here. She's got oh, a little boy. mustache going. Okay. Yeah. Um, but she's a Saint Charles Seven. Oh, I'll take that. That's cool. You still remember what Saint Charles is, despite being in New York, Trav. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Because I haven't seen a fat person in two weeks, so I definitely can't forget what Saint Charles is. Have you looked in the mirror? Man, oh man, yeah. Fattest guy in New York on the street. You were right tweeting now. yesterday about going to delis and how you're putting on weight, or how you're not able to take weight off. And then he also tweeted about flaming Doritos or something. What's that's not healthy. Yeah, it was my dinner. <laughs> you know what? It's gonna be so man. I, when you come back here. Oh, you're <sighs> expecting him to not succeed in the fellowship. No, I just. I mean, I don't want to ex- put expectations on something like that. Understood. I want it to Thank have. Thank you, just kinda ha- I mean, I want to be. We want to follow this journey in the right way, I think, mm-hmm. and not just jump gotcha. to a certain. Don't want level. to curse him. No, and I. W- but even if he comes, let's say, even if he comes back to visit, you are going to not be fun to talk to. I don't think you mm-hmm. love you love Brooklyn so much. You just want to be there all the time. I don't. I don't know why you guys have such a defeatist attitude. You have a lot going for your city. I know. Um, you guys look, you guys got another lime scooter company in town. Oh. Chris, Chris, um, I'm sure is, uh, what is he? He's going to do five minutes tonight at the at comedy night mm-hmm. at the South town place. Right. That's a thing, right? The South town. Place. So, um, right. yeah. And you, you, know, look you at sang Tommy. a jingle Tommy's about him three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, South town. I don't, I don't know that place, but, and then you got Tommy, look at Tommy. He's, he's actually getting with women. You look at his self-esteem is rising every day. You guys have a lot going for you and you shouldn't be so defeatist about it. Hmm. Look at Chris. He's wet. Let me see them belt loose, boy. Let me see what you got. Show them hips. Show them hips. There you go. Look at him. Look at him. Look at Chris. He's not, he's no longer pregnant anymore. He looks good. Hmm. See? got a lot going for you. Gardner, let me see your hair. Let me see your edges. So you look like a princess. You guys look delightful. And Tommy, are those new glasses? No. <laughs> are those bangs? What about those bangs? Those bangs look new. Mm-hmm. It's just because the hairspray didn't work right this morning. <laughs> oh, man. See? See, a but lot is going okay. on for you guys. That's great. It's good. Oh, look. What do you got going on? Aww. What's going good for you? Uh, well, I have street. a, like I said, I have a, I have a date later this afternoon, and then I'm meeting up with my fellows to discuss our writing project. Where are you? Uh... And guess who organized it? I organized it, guys. I organized it. 
I know, right? Look at me being a leader. Clap for him. Yeah. No, because that upsets us now that he wouldn't do that while he was here. <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh, it's like something they didn't pick up on. But now can I tell here. you guys something? I will tell you this, and I don't know whether or not I want to save it for Great American Race, but I couldn't sleep last night, and so I decided to pop open the Netflix and check out a couple documentaries, <laughs> and I started watching Abducted in Plain Sight. <laughs> Mm-mm. Has has anyone seen this documentary? I I, 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 don't, I don't honestly I don't like to. after the giant like uh, yeah. wave of it. Remember that it was huge. It was this just giant phenomenon. Everybody's oh it's so messed up. After you get just like the cliff notes from that, I don't know why you would want to. Like it just sounds so jacked up. Like I, it just, I don't know what it is. Ah, it. don't Google it. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm not faulting you for watching it, but yeah, it turned, I just couldn't do it. I was, I was like, Oh, I get it. Don't need to hear anything else. I was, I was the same way. And I was like, I don't know, man, the way y'all are breaking down this documentary, I don't think I can understand as to why the things are happening in the way that you're describing them. But I, I did go through with it last night and I have to say, I don't think I've ever watched a documentary that made me say what the 40 times in such a short span mm-hmm. of time, like the first 90 seconds of the documentary, you're already ready to throw your television screen. It's that shocking. I didn't like, it's one of those documentaries where you're thinking, okay, it's over. It's over. It's over. Oh dear God, there's 10 times more. And it's one of the most disturbing documentaries I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think that will be my ace in the hole with, for whatever reason, I'm losing great American race. That is what I will bring back and slap on the table because it is not a strong reflection of your community. Do you want us to counter with the Michael Jackson documentary? Like, I didn't know if we, Uh, I thought we were drawing lines. It's worse than Michael Jackson, bro. No, it's not. It's worse than Michael Jackson. It's worse than Michael Jackson. Is worse than Michael Jackson. I think Michael Jackson spanned Easily. like three decades, dude. Don't forget that. Man, this thing spanned it three decades, too. Michael Jackson put uh, tiles in his house that would make noise if you walked on them at night. Yeah, this is very calculated. Oh, it's like the... Oh, uh, well, these parents allowed their neighbor to sleep with their daughter. Uh, their the 13-year-old song. daughter. I haven't seen... Is this the Jan Bronberg? Y- yes. Uh, she's come out and Allowed talked him. about that, too. She, there's, like, tweets about it. You should read them. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's... How that's um, not exactly how it went. That's exactly how it was explained in the documentary. I'll, I'll, I'll DM you this tweet. A quick rundown. Okay. A quick rundown. The Black Sheep reminding us uh, rules for what Chris tells Tommy to look up. Do not look up the premise of a movie. Mm-hmm. Do look up Meat Spin. <laughs> that's right yep I, right. I can't argue with my own logic uh <laughs> for anything i should be looking but the up movie today, guys. the movie you should have you but have you seen the documentary tommy i have not you have to see the documentary i think you will get better context maybe to her tweets whatever they may be but okay. she's in the film the victim is in the film and she acknowledges that she uh had several encounters with this neighbor who over an extended period of time was allowed by her father to be, who to allow to sleep over in her room when she was oh, yeah, that's a child. Funny. That's horrible. Uh, that's some it's, Dr. Phil it, stuff right there. But it's a, but the but the funny thing is the sto- that like that in itself would have been a shocker if the documentary had stopped there. But then there's more. There's literally a moment where. Do I spoil or no? What do we think? Spoil yes, away. No. I don't want to watch this mind. garbage. Okay. You've already... There, okay. Ugh. Well, there's the father um, basically has a sexual encounter with the male neighbor as well. And the male neighbor also has an affair with the wife, the mother of the woman, of the little girl he was raping. Horrific. Boy, it is, a, is a... It is, that yes, is rough. it is a incredibly oh, oh my god, it is one of the most disturbing and it yeah it's there's a moment where the girl is she's kidnapped twice from the same man as the next door neighbor. That is some rough stuff there. 
Yes. Great way to end the hour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody else here watch Scooby-Doo? It's a great show. There you go. Bring it back up. Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, we've got a couple people saying you didn't even talk about the aliens yet. Was there aliens? Oh, the God. Time? Wait, what? Hey, the, you yes, can tell Gardner's. me this. Way to bury Gardner's the lead. Gardner. Is that oh, that, my God. It is. Yes. It's, it, but it's not a good look. It's not a good look for the alien community, put it that way. Oh, well, don't bring it up. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be a trend in this country Big documentary right now. trying to take down aliens one Look, aliens, film at a time. Look, aliens uh, exist. Aliens exist, and they, they are here. Yeah. Thanks, Tom DeLong. Uh, right. Guys, big thanks to Buzz's Wine Grill. They support Link us. 182. They're out and about all over the place. I'm putting a link to their website in the comments. That's Buzz's Wine Grill. Dot com. You can check their locations daily. We're giving you 10 bucks to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill today as a prize for Fair Foul. Your topic, sports curses inspired by what happened with the Blues last night. Send us an email, wall at weareliveradio.com. You can get your buzz on, get your poke on. Make it happen, everybody. Chris Denman, intern Tommy, Chris Gardner, right here at Midcoast Studios, St. Louis Grand Center. And uh, check out midcoast.media. Cool announcement. We've got a big thing happening at 10 a.m. today with Metro Ticks for a show next week that was just announced. Travis Trails live in Brooklyn, New York. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.